KNOC, it is the Hard Rockology Show with Chris and Matt, and that was Snoo, Pull My Stinger, from their latest record, What's It To Ya? Right, Matt? What's It To Ya? What's exactly. It To Ya? What's It To Ya? And we have on the phone with us, Curtis Don Vito. Curtis, welcome to the show. Hey, good to be here. Great. Thanks for uh, joining us this evening. Oh, yeah. Hard Rockology. You couldn't keep me away. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. We appreciate you coming on the show, and... Uh, you're not stuck in any of the rain or hailstorms in Southern California right now, are you? Is it hailing? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, the, it's the Armageddon. It's the oh end, of, end of the world. It's hail in California. I know. God, we don't have much longer to go. Yeah, they make such a big deal about the weather out here, so a little bit of rain throws everybody through a, through a, for a loop, I guess. <laughs> I know. God, I, how would any of us do if we lived on the East Coast? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't think we'd even go outside. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, but you know what? The end of the world coming. Just enough time to pick up the brand new Snoo album. What's it to you? Exactly. Yes. So, so that's why we, that's why we have you on the air right now. You so. can play that in the in the in the in the bunker, right? As as the end of the yeah. world's ending, you just crank up Snoo and stuff. It'd be great. <laughs> I know. I do. We just made it under the wire here. <laughs> Go out and get the album. What's it to you? <laughs> There's not much time left. <laughs> so tell us about the new record. Um, we th it caught our attention because I, I guess um, advertising does work. I saw your uh, your ad on the uh, that metal show, and I said, "Oh, let's try to get these guys on, see if they can come on. It'd be great." Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, uh, that metal show. I mean, it's that's that's a show designed for all of us. And then I heard about you guys. It was like, oh man, another show that's just catered to me and uh, and everybody else who loves the kind of music would, that me and you are into. Well, actually what happened was we saw your advertising on uh, that metal show and we figured, you know what, we need to do a radio show. And this is all because of Snoo. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're blaming me, huh? Oh, well, I don't know if we're blaming you. I think we're uh, giving you credit for why we're on the air right now. Because it's, right. it's, it's, been, it's, been, it's bands like you that we want to do this show for because there's a lot of music out there that a lot of people don't get a chance to listen to or isn't promoted the way we feel it should be promoted. And, Absolutely. Uh, so that's uh, why we're doing this show. So, what, well, I mean, basically, what can you tell us about this new album and uh, and how it came about? Because I noticed you've worked with some uh, some pretty good producers and engineers on this particular album. Yeah, well, it's our third album. And, uh, yeah, it just came out you know, in August, so it's still pretty new. Uh, yeah, we worked with our long-term producer, Bobby Osinski, who's uh, he's been with us from day one, and uh, we brought in Ken Scott to engineer and mix the album. And Ken is is done. You know, he he cut his teeth working with the Beatles. I mean, this guy talk about a legendary and working with all the best you know classic albums that he's produced. You know, with that David Bowie and Elton John and on and on and on. So getting to work with him was just God, it was a big thrill. It's like, no way, Ken Scott wants to work with us. <laughs> how, how, how did that come about? I mean, how do you get somebody like Ken Scott to come in there and, and work on your album? Well, uh, Bobby had been working with Ken. Actually, Bobby was helping Ken write his new book. Uh, he's got a, a, a kind of a, a biography about all his experiences called Abbey Road to Ziggy Stardust. And uh, Bobby co-wrote it with him. And while he was working with him on, on that... He played him this new stuff and uh, asked him you know, what he thought, and he was into it, and he wanted to work with us on the next one. So we were just, God, <laughs> we lucked out big time. Um, and he was just amazing to work with. You know, Beatles stories and all this inside information about <laughs> things. And it's all in his book, so, you know, I guess this is a plug for uh, Ken's book. I mean, well, just like I said, the opportunity to work with them. So, I mean, I mean, did a phenomenal job on the album. The album sounds great. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it was just uh, an amazing experience just being able to work with a guy like, you know, Ken Scott and record it over at Total Access, which turned out to be the last place Ronnie James Dio ever recorded, you know, I guess the final sessions he did with Heaven and Hell. Yeah. And uh, you know, so we dedicated the album to, to Ronnie James Dio because we could sort of feel his presence in there. You know, at least I could. It was just like... Yeah. <laughs> sort of like his ghost was following me around, just going, you could do it, you could do it. And I felt so inspired, you know, as a singer. So, 
on the um, the song we played, "Pull Pull My Stinger." Um, how did you guys come about the uh, idea for the video? Because <laughs> we watched that the other night, Matt and I, and it was like this is like one weird video. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, it was, uh, how did it come about? And trying to come up with a, vi- uh, a visual concept for for that song was uh, that was a trip. It's like, what are we going to do for Pull My Stinger? And uh, we were asking uh, anybody and everybody if they had any ideas because we just didn't know how to tie in a visual with this thing. And we kept hearing from people that, uh, you know, uh, bees, there should be bees in there. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Bees, how are we going to fit that in? And so I got the bright idea of uh, calling up this bee farm that's the, that's up here, you know, in the area. And, you know, you did we come up there and shoot a video? <laughs> I'm fully expecting him to say, yeah, right, buddy. And he was like, sure, come on up. <laughs> so it was like, no way. We, we set us up with, you know, the beekeeper suits and everything. Sure, come on up. <laughs> and just, so it was just like fully expecting for that idea to be shot down in a heartbeat. Uh, once we got a yes, it was like, I guess we're doing this. So we went up there and he gave us beekeeper suits. And we set up the band around all these beehives. There's a million bees everywhere. <laughs> Everybody's freaking out, like, oh, these bees everywhere. We're going to get stung. And, and the, you know, the, the guy who owned the farm was just like, no, just don't swat them or anything, and they'll be cool. They're all female bees, and they're they're not aggressive. So was that like the female bee that was in the uh, the video that you're, <laughs> yeah. you're pouring up? Well, just, the just, queen bee was the girl in the video, yeah, right? Just, just so people out there that are listening, if you haven't seen the video for Pull My Stinger, definitely go to YouTube or, or the, the website and, and, and pull it up because it's a classic 80s-style video. Here's the band in beekeeper's suits in the middle of, of beehives and such, and then it, <laughs> then it cuts away to this... I mean, I, she's wearing next to nothing in this video, dumping honey down her, her body. And I got to ask you, what, what type of honey were you guys using? Was that like a clover or a, a sage <laughs> or a wildflower honey on her? Yeah, I, I, I think it was uh, wild wildflower. It had to be wildflower, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you guys wasted quite a lot of honey dumping it down her. I mean, that was. I like, know, I know. You could have made some good mead with that honey. <laughs> yeah, really. I, I think we actually put it to good use, don't you? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, the definitely. video is definitely worth checking out. I mean, I was like laughing my ass off when I was watching a drummer play the drums in a beehive. Yeah. <laughs> beehive scene. I know. We, we were, you know, we were thinking, God, what are people going to think? They're think we're a bunch of freaks doing this. We've never done anything that goofy before. But we had to go for it, you know? It's just like, why not? You know, it's just be crazy, weird. But, and, and yeah. just rock and roll at the same time. Yeah, because and music- we had to bring in the girl, so it, you know it, it wasn't just stupid. It was uh-huh. like you got to see this. <laughs> no, see, no. Finding a girl to do that in the first place was not easy. We we talked to so many girls, and they're like, you know. Well, you want to be in our video? Yeah, we'd love to be in your video. Well, what we want you to do is pour honey all down your body. What? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think I'm up for that. So, so, I, so oh, it's, come on, come on. We finally found a girl who said yes. Yeah. So is it safe to say that this girl's not seeing anybody in the van right now, so she's readily <laughs> available for anybody that's interested? <laughs> she is completely available. All Believe right. me, area, all the guys have their hung tongues hanging out during the filming of that one. <laughs> well, as crazy as the video sounds to our listeners right now, the the song that's playing behind it is a total kick ass rock song, so it just fits perfectly. And then and your your lead guitar player goes into this great solo and he's in the beehive yeah. <laughs> beehive uniform or outfit or whatever you want to call it, a beekeeper suit, right? And he's just like playing away like it's no big deal. We do this every day. <laughs> we just play yeah. play in the middle of nowhere with the bees everywhere. <laughs> I know. We, you know. we just had to go into this. It's like, okay, we're putting on a show. It's just like being on stage. Forget about the bees. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I mean, we did what we always do and just tried to play it off like, you know, we're serious, even though we feel ridiculous. <laughs> well, it worked. It worked for for Matt and I at Hard Rockology, so I'm just letting you know that. So if All it right. worked for us, it's going to work for everybody who likes hard rock and heavy metal. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it, it, it's full-on hard rock, and, and you know, it's it, We've got the spirit of, of all that going on, even though it looks ridiculous. It, it somehow makes sense, and you know, having that girl in there is total rock and roll. So, you know, people seem to dig it. So, I, I guess 
as long as it's being received well, uh, I can't. Uh, I can't really say anything let's, negative. Let's try to get into heavy rotation on. I would say MTV, but they don't play videos anymore. Yeah, no, I know. What's, what's up with that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 